Hi guys, so uh, let me just make a little video over here for you to finish off example 4, example 5, and example 6 in our notes. Today we had so much stuff to get through and uh, concepts to talk about that we didn't really get there. So uh, we did example 4a and b with all my classes, but uh, the other two not really. So I'm going to go through this uh, with you real quick, all right? So this example says use reference angles to find the given, f uh, evaluate the given functions. So cosine of negative 210, what I had said is maybe draw a picture to help yourself understand what's going on here. Remember, negative angles are uh, clockwise angles. So something like this. And if you go just past 180, about 30 degrees past 180, um, with this your initial side and then your terminal side in the second quadrant, uh, then this angle can represent the angle negative 210 degrees. That's the whole thing. And then your reference angle here, uh, theta prime, is basically this distance here. How far am I away from the x-axis? And the answer for that is 30 degrees. You're 30 degrees away from the x-axis. Okay? And so if you do that, remember uh, reference angles are always positive, and we can uh, think about a triangle that we have that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This would be 60 degrees, 30 degrees is the reference angle. And so we know that this is uh, the side opposite the 30 degree angle is 1, opposite 60 is root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. But since we are in the negative x-axis, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, since we're in the negative x-axis, we can make this, uh, label this negative 3. Okay, negative 3. Uh, sorry, negative root 3. And therefore, the answer to the question cosine of negative 2, 10 degrees is the same as uh, the reference looking at... Um, this is a question about a triangle with a reference angles of 30 degrees in the second quadrant. And therefore, we're just doing cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is negative root 3 over 2. And that's the answer. Okay, so I'm talking a lot, but it's not really that complicated to think through it. Draw the angle, find the reference angle, see if it corresponds to a triangle. If it does, then uh, use the triangle. Okay. So, same thing here, cotangent 5 pi over 3. We had discussed that you need to be very good at finding angles in space. So, where 5 pi over 3 is, is important to you without having to convert everything to degrees all the time. So, 5 pi over 3 should be somewhere over here, okay? Uh, all the way around to 5 pi over 3. And how you know that is ask yourself, how far away am I from being 6 pi over 3? So 6 pi over 3, which would be 2 pi, is over here. So 5 pi over 3 is here. So how far am I away? That's pi over 3. But pi over 3 is also known as uh, 60 degrees. Okay. So what you have here is a theta prime reference angle of 60 degrees. And then you can also think about this as a triangle here, a right triangle, and opposite 60 again is the bigger side root 3, but this would be negative since I'm in the negative y-axis down here. And then this would be opposite the smaller angle, which would be here 30, this would be 1, and then the hypotenuse is always 2. Okay, so the answer to the question cotangent of 5 pi over 3, looking at it from the perspective of a reference angle and constructing a little triangle there in the fourth quadrant, uh, you just get cotangent, which is adjacent over, high, uh, adjacent over opposite, which is 1 over negative root 3. We can't leave it like that. We rationalize by multiplying root 3 top and bottom, so you get root 3 over negative 3, or negative 3 root 3, either way, negative, uh, sorry, negative root 3 over 3, something like that, okay? So that's how you do the reference angles 
draw a little picture for yourself. Um, as you get better with this, you probably won't need to draw a picture anymore. You could just visualize what's happening, see which quadrant you're in, see what ratio of sides you're talking about. You probably could get away with not doing uh, pictures at all. Okay. All right, so number five is not my favorite example, but I'll do it because it's a textbook example. Um, it talks about this specific little robot called the Frogbot, and it's designed for explaining, exploring rough terrain on other planets. Um, it can jump at a 45 degree angle uh, and with initial speed of 16 feet per second. On Earth, the horizontal distance traveled by the projectile launched at an angle theta with initial speed v is given by this. So, I mean, this is a formula we've never seen before, so they're just giving us a formula to help us answer the question. Uh, so we're going to use this, and for us, v is speed in feet per second. So v is speed. Uh, what else? Theta is the angle at which projectile is launched. Angle at launch, something like this. Okay. And how far? Give me the distance. This is distance. Okay, distance. How far can the robot jump? Um, so, I mean, I'm not really too much of a fan of this exercise, but okay. Um, you just substitute uh, your numbers. So, speed here is 16 feet per second. Uh, angle is 45 degrees. So, you just say D equals... 16 feet per second squared over 32 times the sine of 2 times theta. And the angle here is 45 degrees. Okay, So what you'll end up getting is something like this. The distance is, basically if you do this, you get 8 times sine 2 times 45 is 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees. And that means the distance that it can jump is 8. Now, why is sine 90, or what is the value of sine 90? Ooh, that's a quadrantal angle. And so here is 90 degrees. Okay, so I gave you two ways of doing this in class. You can think about a unit circle that goes through here, and this be a coordinate point, which would be 0, 1. This would be the adjacent. This would be the opposite side. And this is the hypotenuse, which is always 1. So if we're talking about sine of 90, sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, right? So sine of 90 would be 1 over 1, which means 8 feet, all right? So that's the quadrantal angle. Also, you can think about sides of a triangle, something like that. Whichever one appeals to you. But that's the answer. This is a, not really a much of a problem, just plugging in some numbers into a formula someone gave you. Okay, uh, Number six is a little bit better. <clears throat> uh, ask the question, rock climber is using a rock climbing treadmill. That would be this whole device, a rock climbing treadmill. That's 10.5 feet long. So what's the 10.5 feet? This right here is 10.5 feet, okay? <clears throat> That's what's 10.5 feet. And then it says, uh, the climber begins by lying horizontally on the treadmill, which is then rotated about its midpoint by 110 degrees. So uh, starting out flat, and then it's rotated 110 degrees. So this angle here is theta, which is 110 degrees. Okay, and then from the midpoint to the top of the treadmill here, they're telling you is 5.25 feet, which is half of the 10.5 feet. <clears throat> so uh, it says uh, if the midpoint of the treadmill is six feet above the ground, how high above the ground is the top of the treadmill? Uh, again, I'm not really sure how useful this is really in real life application. Uh, find the height of the treadmill, maybe just for installing it somewhere, but I mean, then you could just measure, I don't know, any case. 
It's a problem solving question, so let's solve the problem. <clears throat> so uh, they're telling us the midpoint right here, the midpoint right here is six feet above the ground. Okay, so what is the whole distance? Well, strategy then is if this is six, all I need to do is find this little piece and I'm done. Okay, well, if you look at that, that's the same as saying, let me find that distance right there. And since we're good with reference angles and how to solve these type of questions, uh, there's actually two different ways we can do this. But if we think about this in terms of a reference angle, we can say, how far am I from 180 degrees? I'm 70 degrees away from 180 degrees. I have the hypotenuse, then I can find the um, opposite side, right? So really, this is my opposite side. <clears throat> And if I have that, I add it to 6 and I'm done. So you can use a reference angle approach. So if you do that, you'll say from looking at the picture from this reference angle, it's really uh, what? Opposite over hypotenuse, which is just sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. So if I do that, I can solve it. I'll need to use my calculator because we don't have a triangle or special uh, uh, information for 70 degrees, but I can do sine of 70 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is uh, this the length I'm looking for, I don't know, x over the hypotenuse here is 5.25, as we said earlier. So this is basically means that x is 5.25 times sine of 70 degrees. Okay, 5.25 times sine of 70 degrees. And if you do that, uh, you get basically 4.93. Okay, so x is about 4.93 feet. But let's see what happens if you do this without the reference angle and just do a uh, sine of 110 degrees. Okay, sine of 110 degrees equals to opposite over hypotenuse. You've got a con triangle constructed. This is kind of like our example one. And if you do that, you still get the same thing. And let's see if you get the same answer too. So if you do this, x is 5.25 times sine of 110 degrees. So that means x is about uh, sine of 110 times 5.25. And that gives you exactly the same answer. Okay? Which is fine. That's the reference angle. If it doesn't give you the same answer, then uh, we could use this technique. So really, the reference angle technique is better. So here's the answer for that part. So I know that this little segment here is 4.93. So the total height is the sum of those two. And so the total height would be, okay, or the mid, uh, 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 how high above the ground is the top. Well, the height is 6 plus 4.93, which is 10.93 feet, something like that. Okay? I hope this, guy, this helped you guys.